Hello, this is Seolito Rodriguez. Objective 4.1 Manage anti moldware and anti spam policies for exam 70 347 Enabling Office 365 Services. Uh, please remember that you can visit my uh, webpage listed here on the slide to take a look at uh, all the objectives for this exam. Objective 4.1 Manage anti malware and anti spam policies. This objective deals with the exchange online anti malware and anti spam functionality. You manage this functionality through the configuration of anti malware and spam filter policies. These policies determine what action Exchange Online will take with a spam and malware as it passes through the service. Anti-malware policies. Anti-malware policies allow you to block incoming malware from reaching user inboxes. Anti-malware policies also allow you to stop your own users from inadvertently sending malware to other people in your organization or others on the internet. Anti-malware policies are part of an in-depth defense strategy. Users in your organization are far less likely to be infected by malware transmitted through email messages if malware is being purged by Exchange Online as well as by an anti-malware solution installed on the client computer. Anti-malware notifications. Notifications allow you to configure whether the sender of the message in which malware is detected will be notified and whether administrators will be notified. Notifications are only sent when the entire message is deleted. The notification language is dependent on the location of the message being processed. As you can see in the, uh, in the figure, notifications can be sent to internal, uh, the internal senders, that means people inside the organization, or to external senders. That means people that are sending email to uh, the inside users from uh, other companies. Uh, for administrators, you can notify the administrator about undelivered messages from internal senders, and you could also notify administrators about undelivered messages from uh, external sender. Um, so uh, some companies notify only the internal sender uh, as best practice and to keep a track of what's going on. Uh, it is important in many cases to notify the, the administrator so that if it becomes a recurring pattern then as administrator then we can take uh, proactive actions. To review the default anti-malware policy uh, once you log in to the Office 365 um, console, you will then go to the Exchange Admin Center, as shown on the, on the picture over here. And on the Exchange Admin Center, you are going to click on Protection. And uh, the first tab, or the first link over here, it's the Malware Filter. Um, so this is the uh, the default filter in this tenancy and on the right uh, you can see that the default uh, it's enabled and also there is a summary of uh, some of the configuration on this uh, on this uh, policy creating an anti anti malware policy you can create different until malware palaces and then apply them to different groups of email users. For example, you might want to have an anti-malware policy for one group of users 
that provides notifications to the user if malware is detected and a message is purged and another policy that sends notifications to an administrator if malware is detected and the message is purged. Uh, let's say for example that you want to be notified as, a, as an exchange administrator if the accounting department or the HR department or uh, the CEO of the company um, you want to be notified if, if those people are getting uh, malware as an administrator. You may not care about uh, individual users or you know people that are not at a, uh, the executive level or departments you know that it's not a big deal if they uh, receive um, uh, uh, you know some anti-malware. Uh, eventually uh, anti-malware will come through. I mean no company is 100% secure from receiving you know viruses or anti-malware. Uh, we try our best as uh, administrators but it is almost impossible to uh, to stop everything. But um, we want to make sure that if uh, senior level management gets any malware whatsoever, we want to be notified and we want to, to, to purge those messages. Um, our goal, of course, is to make sure that uh, no one in the company is receiving uh, until malware through our policies, but again, it is almost impossible. So if something comes through, we want to be absolutely sure that we are notified so that we can take uh, immediate action. You, you don't want to get a call from your manager uh, informing you that the CEO is really upset or he's wondering why he's getting uh, 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 malware. So again, this is uh, one of those things in which we can um, control or at least we can be notified and then take um, the necessary steps to correct that problem. Windows PowerShell anti-malware policy commandlets. There are a number of Windows PowerShell commandlets that you can use to manage uh, filter policies and malware filter rules. Filter rules determine the conditions under which a malware filter policy applies. For example, you might have one malware filter policy that applies to recipients in one recipient domain and another malware filter policy that applies to recipients in another recipient domain. Um, and this is, uh, for example, the case in a company where there is uh, more than one domain. Uh, especially these uh, multinational companies that ad acquire all the companies through, uh, you know, buyouts and acquisitions and, and joint ventures and stuff like that. So it, it is very common to, uh, in these big companies, to have more than one domain. So, and in this case, uh, this is uh, this is a good thing to do. So you can use the get dash malware filter policy commandlet to basically view uh, malware filter policy settings and then you use the set malware filter policy to uh, modify malware filter policy settings. Um, and again this is for people that uh, prefer to use PowerShell. A lot of these um, settings are better to be done through um, through the GUI, but if you have to automate, uh, if you want to use automation or you want to configure um, a whole bunch of domains or uh, you know big number of powers at the same time, then obviously uh, PowerShell is a better solution. Connection filter palaces. Connection filter palaces let you always allow email from trusted senders and always black email from known spammers. Exchange Online only supports the default connection filter policy. Uh, you configure connection filters by configuring an IP uh, allow list and an IP blacklist. So um, let's say that you are getting uh, a spam from uh, you know from an email address and by looking at the header you can identify the IP address where it's coming from 
uh, well then you can go ahead and, and block that IP address uh, most uh, known spammers are already uh, put into uh, you know uh, block lists and, and they are you know automatically uh, stopped at either the gateway label if you have a um, email hygiene product or by Office 365 using the online protection uh, but again you you will eventually get you know spams that can you know the constantly people out there sending spams and, and creating uh, you know email addresses and, and, and trying to spoof those email addresses so in a sense this will give you a, a little bit of control uh, also like you know if there is a specific hacker that is trying to get passed through those things then you can try to identify their IP address and, and obviously list it and in the same token is a domain get blacklisted for whatever reason then you can put it into a save list to make sure that you can receive email uh, uh, from a, a company that has been identified as, as trusted in that for whatever reason has uh, it's being blocked by exchange online So again, if you want to use uh, a PowerShell, then if you want to work with uh, you know command list to manage the connection filter policy, uh, you can use either the uh, get dash hosted connection filter policy command uh, when you want to review the default policy settings, or you can use the set dash hosted connection filter policy command to configure the uh, connection filter policy settings. Spam filter palaces allow you to configure how incoming messages are categorized, including which characteristics a message might have that means you want it flagged as a spam. The default policy applies to all users in the company. You can also configure custom palaces that apply to a specific users, groups, and domains within the organization. When configuring the default policy or creating a custom policy, you need to configure which actions to take for messages that are likely to be spam and messages that are almost certainly spam. Uh, there are several options. Uh, one option is to move the message to the junk email folder and this is you know the message then will go into the uh, junk email folder in in the Outlook uh, uh, client or you can uh, quarantine the message and when this setting is chosen then messages are moved to a quarantine folder for uh, up to 15 days before being deleted um, being moved to quarantine allows someone to basically review the message so that they can determine whether or not it is uh, actually a spam. Uh, another option is that uh, you can delete the message and when this uh, setting is chosen the message and any attachments are simply deleted. Uh, you can also configure here whether a bulk email is marked as spam and the threshold that should be applied uh, to bulk email. Um, and, and this is important to understand because sometimes uh, the marketing department in a company may want to send email to hundreds of uh, if not thousands of users and and people need to realize that to be honest with you uh, exchange or exchange online is not basically uh, designed to be used to send bulk email and, and when I mean bulk email I'm talking about you know using as a, a marketing tool to send thousands and thousands of emails at the same time there is a lot of restrictions that exchange imposes when you want to send a message to let's say 20,000 users there are company there are a lot of web services out there that are specifically uh, that, that uh, perform this service okay this is not something that the marketing department should try to do with the internal tools for exchange or exchange online um, and again so those are the things that you can configure over here so to make sure that uh, no one within the company or outside the company will try to send uh, email to thousands of users at the same time 
All right, so let me give you an example of the the kind of scenarios, the kind of problems that you solve by um, uh, configuring the spam filter block lists. Uh, you can block either an email address or you can block an entire domain. Um, I have worked uh, in many cases in, um, in, in my job in which uh, someone uh, sends uh, a message to uh, someone in the accounting department, especially a senior level management, uh, someone like the CFO, and the email address comes supposedly from the CEO of the company, uh, basically instructing the CFO or the accounting manager, whomever that might be, to um, send a check or to send a payment uh, from services that a company has performed and then to send the money to uh, someone, uh, obviously someone outside the company and normally outside uh, the country. And so again, this is a, 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 spoofing, a spoofing address. So um, the fact that you get an email address and in the from fill, it says that it's coming from such and such, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually coming from that person. This is what a spoofing it's all about. Um, as a normal user, it is impossible for, for you to determine that it's a spoofing. You have to read the email address, and obviously, if it's something that is suspicious, something that you don't know about, then obviously, you have to investigate. <laughs> you have to be very careful with this kind of things. Um, so a spoofing address, it's when someone uh, sends an email address, uh, actually an email message, as if that person were somebody else. Now, the only way to detect this kind of things is by looking at the, the header of the email address. And there are uh, many tools online in which you can analyze an email address uh, the Microsoft Connectivity Analyzer, it's, it's, it's one of the best tools that you can use to look at the header of the email address so that you can see exactly what is the reply to address. The reply to address is where the message will go if you actually send that message. Not necessarily when you click on reply, the email address that is on the reply box, the to box, that's not necessarily where it's going. So again, um, the, 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 there are many uh, sophisticated tools that this um, uh, hackers use to, to kind of you know, try to trick you into sending uh, an email message. But uh, as I said again, there are many tools, free tools online, where anybody with a little bit of knowledge about how uh, email headers work can determine actually what is the return address where that message is going. So again, this is something that you can uh, configure with the spam filter block lists. The international spam settings allow you to filter messages based on the message language and the country or region from which the message is sent. Uh, a lot of uh, spam and, and and a spoofing attempt and, and social engineering, whatever you want to call, that happens in the United States in a lot of company actually comes from other countries. And uh, uh, the, the code behind the email address is actually in another language. But again, it's very difficult for a normal user to uh, detect those things. Um, and, uh, and those are the kind of things that you, uh, that you learn about when you use a header analyzer like the uh, Microsoft Connectivity Analyzer. Uh, uh, in other words, the Connectivity Analyzer has uh, uh, an option to look into the email and detect some of these things. But again, you can create uh, filters uh, based on a language or country and just basically you know block those things so if you receive email addresses uh, a lot of email spam or email addresses come from uh, I don't know from China or, or, or uh, Nigeria or whatever the case might be 
and you don't do business with those countries, you're not expecting email addresses, then you can go ahead and create filters and just basically uh, block those emails. The advanced policy options allow you to toggle specific options that either increase the spam score, making it more likely that Exchange Online will recognize the message as spam, or simply mark the message as spam directly. Um, Exchange Online does a very good job at uh, working with spam, and in most cases, uh, there's nothing for you to uh, configure over here. But again, um, it, it depends on, on a, you know, uh, on a company and the the kind of email that you are receiving. So this is, uh, if you're getting a lot of a spam or if you want to uh, address a specific, you know, a spam issues, then this is a place that you should be aware of, that you should, you know, look at and, and see if this would uh, help in your specific case. A spam confidence levels. When a new message passes through the Exchange Online spam filtering algorithms, it is assigned a spam score. The spam score maps to a spam confidence level or uh, SEL rating and it is stamped in what is called an X header for the message. Exchange Online then performs actions on messages based on the SEL rating. For example, a message that has an SEL rating of minus one is delivered to the recipient because that message is coming from a sender, a recipient, or an IP address that has been listed as trusted. Now remember, it doesn't necessarily mean that the message is a good message. Uh, it basically means that the message comes from a recipient that is trusted. So it could be that this recipient shouldn't be trusted and then you have to go and block the sender. But in, when Exchange looks at the SEL rating, this is how it goes. Um, if the message has a rating of 0 or 1, the message is unlikely to be a spam and therefore the message is delivered to the recipient also. If the message has, um, you know, 5 or 6, the message is likely to be a spam and it is either quarantined or deleted. And again, depending on the content of the message, it could be that this is a legitimate email that should come through but is being blocked or is being determined, uh, classified as spam. And then you have to go and configure the spam uh, filtering options to let that message through. Uh, in the same token, if a message has either seven, eight, or nine as an SEL rating, then uh, the message very likely uh, is a spam and uh, it, it will not go through. It will not go to the recipient. But anyway, so this is what the span confidence levels, it's, it's all about. When blocking message content on the basis of language, you enable the filter email messages written in the following language option, and then specify the languages that you want to filter on, uh, on the select language dial box. Outbound spam a spam policy. You can have a case in which someone from within the organization is sending outbound spam, either knowingly, um, you never know. <laughs> so it could be someone trying to send spam to another company from within your company, or it could be uh, someone who has an infective computer and that computer is acting as a, an email relay and is trying to send uh, a spam, uh, outbound spam. So the outbound spam policy block users inside the organization from sending a spam to recipients outside the organization. 
Uh, basically, if an outbound message is suspected to be spam, it is sent through what is called the higher risk delivery pool. Using the higher risk delivery pool reduces the likelihood that the IP address of the normal outbound delivery pool will be added to a blood list by uh, real uh, time providers. Quarantine. Content filtering can be configured to send messages to quarantine rather than to a recipient's junk email folder or to simply delete them. Messages sent to quarantine can be viewed in the quarantine section of the Exchange Admin Center, as you can see uh, over here on the, uh, on the picture. Messages in quarantine will remain there until released by an administrator or until they are automatically deleted when the quarantine period expires. The maximum quarantine period for messages recognized as spam is 15 days. Um, so I have worked in many cases in which uh, a user is not receiving an email address, maybe an email address that the person is supposed to receive from um, a vendor, or a business partner, or a financial institution, whatever the case may be, and there may be something in the message. It could be, well, maybe the message has uh, an Excel attachment uh, with a macro in it or Word or whatever, or there may be something in the body of the message that was detected as spam and instead of sending it to you know the junk mail folder sometimes it's quarantined so you can come and look over here and if it is a legitimate message then you can release it to the user uh, if it's a uh, if it's actually spam then you can go uh, delete it or just wait for the process uh, to take its course and uh, the message will be delivered in uh, 15 days all right, so we have finally arrived at the conclusion of this objective. This is a rather long objective for this exam. So objective summary, what did we learn over here? The malware detection response settings are delete entire message, delete all attachments and use default alert text and delete all attachments and use the custom alert text. You can configure the following notification options when malware is detected. Notify internal senders, notify external senders, notify uh, uh, administrators about undelivered messages from internal senders and notify administrators about undelivered messages from external senders. You can create different anti-malware palaces and then apply them to different groups of email users. When creating a new custom anti-malware policy, you need to configure the applied to settings. The setting takes the form of an if statement with a condition and condition and exceptions. Uh, a spam filter uh, block lists and allow lists allow you to filter on the basis of email addresses and sender domain. Uh, a spam filter international settings allow you to filter based on language and country or the region of origin. Outbound spam policy allows you to configure um, how spam originating from within your organization is managed. Uh, use the command list with the uh, malware filter policy page to view, modify, create, and remove malware filter policies. Use the command list with the malware filter rule page to view, modify, create, and disable malware filter rules. Use the command list with the hosted connection filter policy page to manage connection filter policies and use the command list with the hosted content filter policy page to view and edit a spam filter settings. And finally, you use the get and release anti-quarantine message command list to search for and release messages from quarantine. Objective review. 
Answer the following questions to test your knowledge of the information in this objective. Um, the answers to this question will be presented in the uh, next slide, but um, at least take a look at these questions and um, depending on how you do, you may have to go and review the content of this uh, video uh, if you really want to be ready to uh, to be prepared to pass at least uh, this objective for this exam.